Microsoft just invested $10 billion into OpenAI. Google Workspace and Microsoft 365 announced new AI to help with productivity. Adobe announced a direct competitor to Midjourney. And to me, it's pretty clear where all of this is going. Bill Gates said that the development of AI is as fundamental as the creation of the microprocessor, the personal computer, the internet, and the mobile phone. So with claims like that, it's clear why we have to talk about exactly what's happening in the AI space, the exciting announcements and major updates that are happening, and how it impacts you directly so that we can hopefully learn how to use it to make a quick bag online before the ChatGPT Terminator takes over. Starting with the huge release of ChatGPT4. They've raised the output limit to 25,000 words and added the ability for the chatbot to take in images and reason with them logically. It's able to know that in an image like this, if the balloon strings were cut, the balloons would fly away. Or if you ask it, what can I make with these ingredients? It's able to detect what ingredients are on the table in this image and give you some recipe ideas. It's even able to detect memes and describe the humor from them. Basically, if I'm a capture right now, I would be a little worried. It's also pretty smart. It's able to rank in the 90th percentile for the bar exam. That just means it's in the top 10% of uniform bar exam test takers, which is the test that you must pass before you're licensed to practice law. That's not even the exciting part though, because just a few days ago on March 23rd, OpenAI announced ChatGPT plugins. This extends the functionality of regular ChatGPT by allowing third-party developers to build plugins that integrate directly into the chat. This is huge, and there's already a lot of hype around this, but here's why I think this is literally going to change the way we use the internet. There are already 11 plugins supported, and we've already started to see demos using the Wolfram, Instacart, and OpenTable plugins. They show off how easy it is to install the plugins, and then they use a prompt which asks ChatGPT to find a vegan food restaurant, some recipes for the weekend with a calculation of how many calories will be in that meal, and then finally to order the ingredients using the Instacart plugin. ChatGPT uses the first plugin from OpenTable to find and make a reservation for a vegan restaurant in the area. Then it finds a simple recipe that they can make and it uses the Wolfram plugin to calculate the exact calories for each ingredient in the meal. Finally, it makes a shopping list and with the Instacart plugin, everything is added to cart ready to buy. They showed another example on Twitter using the Wolfram plugin to calculate the current distance from Earth to Jupiter. And this one is especially noteworthy because ChatGPT calculations have been notoriously bad and using a plugin like Wolfram should help fix this. There are even more plugins on the way from companies like Expedia, Fiscal Note, Shopify and Zapier. They also quickly showed off a code interpreter, but by far the biggest update that they announced is the browsing feature. This feature allows ChatGPT to read up-to-date information off of the internet, since the standard version is only trained on certain information that might not be up-to-date. In their example video, they show off asking, how do this year's Oscar winners compare to recently released movies for box office sales? The web plugin allows ChatGPT to scrape the internet for relevant articles and content, and it's able to compile multiple sources to give you a more accurate answer to your question. After just a few seconds, it's able to pull information from 2023, showing that the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once earned $100 million and Scream 6 grossed only $58 million but it also remembered to mention that the first movie had a longer runtime in theaters to accumulate its 100 million in box office sales. It also shows its sources and the websites it visits so you can check the original content for yourself. But it gets even crazier than that. On their official documentation page for plugin developers, it mentions how ChatGPT will be able to do things like retrieve real-time information like sports scores, stock prices, and the latest news. Let's just stop for a second and think about what that could mean. If you were able to build a ChatGPT4 program that uses a combination of something like Fiscal Note to monitor real-time industry data, or the browsing feature to monitor major news outlets and follow real-time stock prices, you could likely build the most advanced trading bot that we've ever seen. If it has access to all of the major news outlets all at once, the current stock prices, and external factors that you might not normally think would impact a market, you could have a stock trading tool like we've never seen before. These kind of plugins could take something like a company's earning report and translate it into something like a simplified bullet list 
so that people who aren't Warren Buffett can understand complex company financials and make better investment decisions. And on top of taking highly complex information and distilling it down into something consumable and bite-sized, what happens to SEO when this type of tool becomes mainstream? I can only imagine that once the user interface gets a little bit of an upgrade from this, Google is going to have a serious run for their money when it comes to content curation. Just this web browser plugin could change how we use SEO and search algorithms across the internet. They also tell developers that this will be able to access company documents, personal notes, and completing actions like booking flights or ordering food assuming you give it permission. With ChatGPT receiving more than 13 million daily visits after only 117 days being alive, just imagine how much money the creators of these plugins will make. In comparison, YouTube has been alive for over 18 years and it gets about 122 million visits per day. So what happens when ChatGPT is 10 years old? I'm guessing it's going to continue to make billions and billions of dollars, and the earlier developers of plugins are going to make a ton of money as well. Of course, with this extremely new technology, there are some ethical questions as well. For example, this thread by Ben Schmidt on Twitter outlines how OpenAI is not planning on disclosing anything about how their AI is trained. In this screenshot from the report, they highlight how due to competition, they're not going to reveal what information ChatGPT was trained on. Ben goes on to argue that cherry picking the data that the AI is trained on could lead to harmful biases. Because we can't see what information the AI is being trained on, there's no accountability for the accuracy of the information or the biases it contains. This is super important to remember and a major red flag that a lot of us are probably just looking past because it's an exciting new technology. But on top of the crazy plugin news from OpenAI, we also saw a huge update from Midjourney with version 5, and the images are completely insane. The new algorithm focuses on this hyper-realism, generating these incredibly detailed photorealistic images. They really focused on creating these anatomically correct hands, which was previously a big issue. It feels much easier to get these insane color combinations in the artwork. It's much better at interpreting unique or complex styles. Its depth of field is incredible. The attention to detail, like each element in this room, or this bamboo rainforest with a wet path that looks completely real with amazingly detailed lighting. In version five, crafting prompts is also a lot more natural than ever. Instead of giving it a crazy long prompt with a bunch of emojis and keywords, now you can enter a prompt without worrying about using the perfect keywords and you'll still get a good looking image. Basically prompts can just be constructed like normal sentences. I also saw this thread on Twitter about how this guy Christian was able to use seeding in his prompts to basically infuse a different theme or background behind his character that he created. Basically just allowing you to maintain the same look of the character, which was a lot harder in other versions. Obviously, if we're still able to monetize images from Midjourney in the future, there's going to be a lot of money to be made here. But image generation is being taken to a whole nother level because on Tuesday the 21st, we got the exciting announcement of Adobe Firefly, a new addition in their generative AI product line. They showcase things like this lighthouse that they easily replaced by just selecting it and then hitting generate variations. They then expand the bottom of the scene and type in underwater city and it generates it in real time. They also use it to create vectors from sketches, which is going to be a huge time saver. They show off this video scene replacement AI that transforms this summer day into a winter scene from a simple prompt. And they're even exploring 3D models and textures using the same AI technology. But that's only the beginning. We'll also be able to create text effects. In this example, they type out yum in melting chocolate. The text output looks like the word yum in melting chocolate font. But they they can also change the font that the underlying word is written in, which is pretty cool, or change the melting chocolate into something like bread. I think this is super cool. In their video, they showcase their new text to image generator, a feature called inpainting, which allows you to use AI to replace objects in images with something completely different. This smart portrait feature that can completely change facial expressions, completely redesigning or mocking up different photos, converting your existing 3D models into scenes using textures from just a prompt, a super cool text to vector feature, which is going to be huge for us print on demand users, the super cool zoom and enhance feature that we've all been waiting for, and a lot of other stuff. Adobe's text to image AI generator is a direct competitor to Midjourney 
And from what I've seen, the images it generates are surprisingly really good. These images look like super high quality stuff and their prompting looks super easy as well. There's a lot of controversy around AI images already. Midjourney's AI was trained on hundreds of millions of images without the consent of their creators. So some people feel that you shouldn't be allowed to monetize the images that you create with Midjourney because they feel like it's stealing from the original artists. Adobe Firefly aims to completely remove that issue. All of the images that are used to train the Firefly AI have either come from Adobe stock or the public domain so that there won't be any copyright issues now or down the line. It's specifically geared towards commercial use and the contributors to Adobe Stock will be able to tag their images with Do Not Train so that their stock photos won't be used to train the Firefly text to image AI generator. This really gives the power back to the creators to allow them to decide if they want their images to be used to power AI. You'll also be able to train a personalized AI with your own unique style, which should be a game changer for people to create new creative art that nobody else can. Imagine if you could train a private mid-journey bot with a bunch of your previous artwork, and then using a prompt, generate new art in your own unique style. This is obviously going to be huge for the creative people who already use the Adobe products. And if you want a 40% off coupon, you can find one in my description. It doesn't do anything for me except entice you to click subscribe on your way down. But even with that discount code, Adobe is still really expensive. If you need a much, much cheaper solution, then it's a good thing that AI is coming to Canva. It seems like what Canva's doing right now is taking some of the most powerful tools from Adobe's suite and adding it to their own tools through the power of AI. Some examples that they showcased were a magic edit to paint in different objects into a scene just by painting it away and adding a prompt. They showed a magic eraser tool, which is similar to the one that Photoshop has. They have their own text to image generator, like the ones that all of the other companies are doing, and a magic presentation generator that can easily create presentations from a prompt that includes cool looking fonts and stock images ready to go. It's a lot of the similar stuff that we've seen from other AI projects that they're adding to their own services. And those tools are very similar to what we're seeing with the Google Workspace and the Microsoft 365 Copilot. But I'll probably talk about those in a different video. But I just wanted to share these updates with you to keep you in the loop. I think a lot of people are going to make a ton of money with these AI projects, and it makes a ton of sense to start thinking about it early on. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you click subscribe. You can follow me everywhere online. And as always, I'll see you soon.